Ah, the hum of fluorescent lighting, the slightly stained carpeting, the copier that is almost if not already out of paper, the dirty coffee cups. It's no secret that at many schools, the common teacher workspace isn't exactly inviting. No one really seems to be in charge of it. No resources really seem to be allocated toward it, and no one really has time to care. There's a lot of other things going on. But lately, I can't help but ask, what if? What if the community workspace for educators had a little more in common with those amazing co-working spaces I see on Pinterest? Or those cool startup offices with bagels on the counter and ping pong tables that pop up on Netflix sitcoms? Or the legendary work campuses of tech companies like Google and YouTube? What if teachers actually enjoyed working in the faculty room, teacher room, copy room, whatever you call it at your school, because it was, like, nice? When I saw a Facebook question in Creative High School English the other day from an administrator asking how they could do something nice for teachers, my mind turned automatically to this space. I'm just going to call it a faculty room from here on out. Ever since reading Ali Abdal's book, Feel Good Productivity, in December, I've been leaning into my usual proclivity for creating pleasant environments, since apparently feeling good where you do your work really does make you more productive. I really don't think it would take much to overhaul most faculty rooms into a pleasant space that would help create community, make teachers feel more supported, and even inspire more innovative pedagogy. In today's episode, I'm going to share a range of ideas, some of them free, some of them low cost, all of them mainly requiring someone who cares enough to ask for a small budget, gather a few colleagues to help, and get started. Someone like you. Welcome to the Spark Creativity Teacher Podcast, a podcast for English teachers looking for more, more creativity, more engagement, more joy. And no more scripted curriculum, lesson planning ruts, or boring book lists. I'm Betsy Potash, and I'm honored you're trusting me to help. You're not alone on this creative journey anymore. First things first, let's talk about the walls. I've learned a lot from Instagram and HGTV over the years about what an impact the walls make on any room. And I'm guessing the walls of your faculty room are sort of a whitish beige or maybe a beige-ish white. I'd like to suggest three possibilities that I think can make a big difference. Number one, perhaps the easiest improvement would be to purchase a wall sticker or a sticker wallpaper. I had never really heard of these uh, when I first started teaching, Um, but I have seen them more and more. They're growing in popularity. They're so fun. I've put them in my children's rooms. I've browsed quite a lot of them on Etsy and Amazon, and they come in the coolest patterns. They're very inexpensive, really, unless you're going to get something like super fancy and cover an entire huge wall. Um, But you can get like a background that looks like a giant bookshelf of really interestingly designed books and put it up on a wall. Or you can get a forest or you can get like a beautiful mountain scene and you literally just peel it off the backing (laughs) and put it up on the wall and it creates this little um, beautiful moment or big beautiful moment on the wall. Another way to redo a wall would be to just pick up a can of paint, whether it's chalkboard paint or whiteboard paint, which could create a really cool like creative workspace in the room, or just a colorful accent wall, maybe some bright yellow or turquoise along one wall. Another really cool option, third and maybe most complex, would be to put up a mural on one wall. Could you get together with the top art students or the art teacher at your school and visualize a mural? Or maybe there's a teacher at your school that loves art, maybe it's you, and would like to paint something on the wall. Maybe you could get together at a faculty meeting for 10 or 15 minutes and talk about what you might put on a wall that would help represent and inspire your community when they're in there working. Okay, number two, let's talk about resources that could go into this room that that would help inspire creative teaching, creative collaboration, and community amongst your faculty. 
Ideally, when people come in to grab an expo marker or make copies or, um, you know, quickly print something, they could also get a bunch of new ideas for their teaching. So for example, you might create a shelf kind of like your classroom library, except a faculty library that features people's favorite books about teaching. You could invite everybody with a quick email, say, hey, do you have a pile of awesome books about teaching strategies sitting on your shelf from your graduate program or your certification program or just from your own interest, would you be willing to share some of them, you know, temporarily with other people? You could put your name inside, you could display them on this shelf and you could, you could have an empty shelf in the faculty room where people could bring in their favorite teaching books. You could have a little sign out sheet right next to it so everybody knows where their books are if they need them back, right? Make it really obvious so nobody gets nervous. And you can just go in, you can kind of browse those books and say, oh, this looks cool. What school could be by Ted Dintersmith? It looks like, you know, Anna from the history department really loved this book. Um, I'm going to try reading it. And, and you could just grab it and sign it out. And see what you think. And that could lead to a great conversation with Anna over in the history department if you do find it really interesting. And of course, it could also lead to um, good results in the classroom as people are reading different types of pedagogy books and getting new ideas. Another great, totally free option um, in this vein would be to put up posters featuring your favorite teacher podcasts. You can just screenshot the cover of the podcast, add the description from your podcast player, and put on a QR code that leads to the main page of the episode or the main page of the show or like a specific episode that you really like. Um, Then teachers passing by on their way to make copies can see this kind of wall of cool podcasts and you can invite other people to make podcast posters with their favorite podcasts and add them on. I have made like a little starter kit for you (laughs) with four podcast posters. I, I asked the creators of all the podcasts if it was okay with them and they all said, sure, go ahead. That sounds great. And so if you want, you could follow the link in the show notes to get four podcast posters to get you started. Okay. Um, Speaking of posters, another cool idea would be to kind of have a wall of inspiration in your faculty room that was just posters with teaching strategies. And again, I know you're busy. I have made six to get you started. The posters that I made for you are about hyperdocs, stations, silent discussions, sketch notes, hexagonal thinking, and podcasting, because I felt like these were all teaching strategies that can kind of bridge across disciplines and lead to good conversations between folks teaching in different disciplines and, of course, um, positive outcomes for students. Now, you can take my kit as a starting point or you can, you know, you can make your own and you can invite other people to make their own. But the idea is just that you you kind of fill the wall with inspiration. And again, you can add QR codes leading to places to get more information or free tools This could also be a cool challenge if you don't want to start with my kit and you don't want to make them yourself. It could be a really fun challenge to departments. Maybe on one department meeting day at your school, you send out a challenge or you you ask your kind of um, head of school or a principal if they could send out a challenge that every department create a poster about one of the strategies that's working most effectively for them with their students right now. And it could be about anything. It could be Um, just whatever they see getting results and they could create that poster and put it up on this kind of wall of inspiration. Now you can, you can make your wall a big bulletin board. You can put up kind of a clothesline situation with pretty clips so that you can always be changing up the posters and adding to them. You could get frames, whatever works. Okay, next idea is like such a quick, easy level up for anything in the workspace. And that is just to bring in a can of paint um, or see if, you know, parent volunteers are interested in doing a little bit of painting of furniture in your faculty workspace. If you have a big old battered table in the middle where people are always meeting, but it's just kind of a wreck, it's got coffee rings on it and it's got like pencil lines and pen lines and dents everywhere and it just doesn't feel that pleasant to sit there and work. 
how would it look if you just like could, did the top and chalkboard paint or painted the entire thing yellow or um, re-varnished it or whatever? Maybe there's a little coffee table that would be so fun if it was bright blue or a bookshelf that you could paint white because it just looks kind of old and dirty. Um, these small things that we do for our own homes could also be so nice in the common faculty workspace. Okay, next I want to talk about kind of pulling together little spaces in the faculty workroom to create work areas where people can work together. So I was reading Magnolia last week. Yes, who was surprised? I really like Joanna Gaines's work. And I was looking at this article showing the way that an architect and a designer work together on this old lodge. And one of their goals was to create little spaces around the common areas where people could gather. And, you know, it was just really nice to think how they were picturing maybe a, a grandparent and two grandchildren could sit here and read a book, or maybe three people could sit here and play cards. And I, I immediately translated that, you know, as we do in education to the education world how could that look in a faculty workroom? Instead of just having like some computers um, and a table, how could we create little areas where people could get together to talk about something or share something? Maybe there could be a counter that had some high stools or like a high table with some stools over in one area. That could be the place where a few teachers get together to brainstorm ideas for their literary food truck festival. Or maybe there is a big table, but it doesn't have enough chairs. Maybe it needs a few more chairs, and then it would be the perfect place for lunchtime book clubs. Maybe there's kind of an empty wall with just sort of nothing, but it could be a big whiteboard and some rolling chairs and then that's like this cool brainstorming area. It doesn't matter if you have a big budget for this or if you just kind of bring this idea to this space. Um, think about how you can pull together areas where people can be in community. Where, where could two or three people grade together? Where could two or three people imagine together? Um, and then if at all possible, think about how you can add lighting to that little area, right? Lamps, twinkle lights, anything but just the fluorescent buzz from up above. Once your faculty room has a little more structure like this, um, if you can, think about how you can add something like plants. Plants make such an impact on a space. They elevate it so much and they actually you know, research-based have a positive impact on our well-being. They help us feel better when we're around, when we're around nature. That could also be true for like playing waterfall sounds from a Wi-Fi speaker in the, in the faculty room or playing forest or rainforest sounds. Um, these small tweaks can make this space more inviting. So can things like cups of colorful pens or markers or whiteboard markers, anything to kind of like just make it feel more homey and inviting to work there. Okay, last but not least, once you get some of these things in place, whatever one sound appealing to you, maybe you, you know, create a little... Um, color on the wall, you add a pedagogy shelf, you pull together a couple of nice community workstations, and then you want to be thinking about how can you make people realize that this space is here and want to use it. And that really involves galvanizing people to, to be interested in holding some events or meetings in the space. Now, do they need to be like giant breakfast buffets that you invite all 60 people who work at your school to? No. <laughs> they can be small things. Maybe you want to start a book club on the first Monday of the month and it doesn't have to be a book about teaching if you don't want it to be. It can just be like a fun book that brings people together for lunch and helps them get to know each other. Or maybe you have a prep period on Thursdays at eight in the morning and you, you find that you just can't get grading done in your room alone on Thursdays at eight in the morning. You could start like a smoothies and grading group during the prep period in that community space. You could put a poster on the door, come join me for smoothies these and grading. And on Thursday morning, you know, you, you have a blender and some packs of frozen fruit and a bottle of orange juice, and you're going to sit there with your smoothie and little by little more people will come and people who didn't see the poster will be like, what are you doing? And you're like, oh, it's, 
smoothies and grading time <laughs> every Thursday. You can come and join me and they will and they'll bring a friend too. Another thing you could do is send out a quick email blast to your whole teaching community with just like a picture of something that's different about the room, maybe a photo of the new pedagogy bookshelf. And it just says like, hey, be sure to stop by the faculty room and pick up um, a book that you're interested in. I loved da 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 um, you could invite your department chairs at your school to set up small team meetings there or mentorship sessions. Just say like, hey, we've been putting a lot of effort into this space. It could be a really nice new resource for you. And then on an ongoing basis, if there are more things your community is looking for from the space or things that you wanted to do but you didn't get to at this time, you could suggest ideas to your administration or your parent boosters about how they might continue to refresh the space and hold events there or um, add resources that would keep it helpful to you and your teaching community. Or I'm sure you have so many more ideas <laughs> about what kinds of events um, and community just interactions could potentially take place in a space like this if it was a really inviting space. All right, so that's a wrap. Honestly, I'm getting kind of antsy feet over here in Bratislava, wishing I could get my hands on a few faculty rooms because I think this process would be so interesting and so fun. I hope you're feeling just as excited about the idea of a vibrant community space where you and your colleagues can enjoy working together. And I hope you feel a little like, uh, maybe you want to try some of this and do something about it and gather some people to help you. You don't have to do it alone. Remember, it's not about having a huge budget, a little paint, a community call for pedagogy books and extra plants, some new posters, which I have already designed for you if you want as a starting point, and a little bit of furniture restructuring can all make a positive impact. But the other thing is, please don't feel afraid to ask for budget either. You can't receive what you don't ask for, right? So this is something that affects every teacher at your school. And you might be surprised that your administration could just be thrilled to give you some money to spearhead positive change at your school. I'd love to see what you do. If you decide to act on any of the ideas, please do tag me on Instagram at NASPART Creativity with your photos or send me a DM if you want to bounce some ideas around. Thanks so much for joining me today to talk about how we might make your faculty workroom the kind of place you really want to be. Until next time, take care of yourself and stay creative.